Every character in this fairy tale is portrayed by a special instrument of the orchestra. The bird is depicted by the flute. The duck by the oboe. The cat by the clarinet playing staccato in a low register. Peter's grandfather by the bassoon. by chords from three French horns. Peter himself by the string quartet. Hunter's gunshots by the kettle drums and the bass drum. Early one morning, Peter opened the gate and went out on a big green meadow. of a big tree sat a little bird, Peter's friend. All is quiet, chirped the bird gaily. Soon a duck came waddling around. She was glad that Peter hadn't closed the gate and decided to take a nice swim in the deep pond in the meadow.
seeing the duck, the little bird flew down upon the grass, settled next to the duck, and shrugged her shoulders. What kind of a bird are you if you can't fly, said she. To this the duck replied, What kind of a bird are you if you can't swim? And dived into the pond. They argued and argued, the duck swimming in the pond, the little bird hopping along the shore. Suddenly, something caught Peter's attention. He noticed a cat crawling through the grass. cat thought, the bird is busy arguing, I'll just grab her. Stealthily she crept towards her on her velvet paws. shouted Peter, and the bird immediately flew up into the tree. While the duck quacked angrily at the cat. From the middle of the pond. crawled around the tree and thought, is it worth climbing up so high? By the time I get there, the bird will have flown away. Grandfather came out. He was angry because Peter had gone into the meadow. It's a dangerous place. If a wolf should come out of the forest, then what would you do? Peter paid no attention to his grandfather's words. Boys such as he are not afraid of wolves.
But Grandfather took Peter by the hand, led him home and locked the gate. Peter gone, then a big grey wolf came out of the forest. In a twinkling, the cat climbed up the tree. The duck quacked and in her excitement jumped out of the pond. But no matter how hard the duck tried to run, she couldn't escape the wolf. He was getting nearer, nearer, catching up with her. And then he got her, and with one gulp, swallowed her. And now, this is how things stood. The cat was sitting on one branch. The bird on another. Not too close to the cat. The wolf walked around and around the tree, looking at them with greedy eyes.
In the meantime, Peter, without the slightest fear, stood behind the closed gate watching all that was going on. He ran home, took a strong rope and climbed up the high stone wall. One of the branches of the tree, around which the wolf was walking, stretched out over the wall. Grabbing hold of the branch, Peter lightly climbed over onto the tree. Peter said to the bird, fly down and circle round the wolf's head, only take care he doesn't catch you. touched the wolf's head with his wings while the wolf snapped angrily at him from this side and that. did worry the wolf, how he wanted to catch her. But the bird was cleverer, and the wolf simply couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> Meanwhile, Peter made a lasso, and carefully letting it down, by the tail and pulled with all his might. <laughs> Feeling himself caught, the wolf began to jump wildly, trying to get loose. Peter tied the other end of the rope to the tree. And the wolf's jumping only made the rope round his tail tighter. Just then, the hunters came out of the woods. Following the wolf's trail and shooting as they went.
Peter, sitting in the tree, said, Don't shoot. Birdie and I have already caught the wolf. Now help us to take him to the zoo. And there, imagine the triumphant procession. Peter at the head. After him, the hunters leading the wolf. Winding up the procession, Grandfather and the cat. Grandfather tossed his head discontentedly. Well, and if Peter hadn't caught the wolf, what then? Above them flew Birdie chirping merrily. My, what fine ones we are, Peter and I. Look what we've caught. And if one would listen very carefully, he could hear the duck quacking inside the wolf, because the wolf in his hurry had swallowed her alive.